this time, pag-usapan naman natin yung laws governing parallel circuit. So, let's have an example. Let's say we have an impressed voltage. That is 15 volts. And it is parallel to, let's say, three branches. Parallel. Parallel. Okay, so your your voltage or this particular branch where the voltage is connected has two terminals. Yung ends ng voltage mo connected sa dun sa isang dulo ng first resistor natin. Let's say this is let's say this is um, three ohms. Tapos yung isang dulo ni three ohms na dito sa second resistor natin at yung kabilang dulo niya which is, let's say, this is 5 ohms. At yung third branch natin, iisa lang na resistor ang laman niya. Yung isang terminal nakapakabit dun sa taas ni 5 ohms, yung kabila nandun sa ilalim. And let's say, this is 15 ohms. And as you can see, based on what, what we've learned in the introduction of chapter 2, since lahat ito ay short circuits, di ba? Kahit may nodes ka dito. Pare-parehas lang to. Pwede ko siyang i-redraw at ganito yung itsura niya. 15 volts yung terminal natin. Ah, yung supplied voltage natin. Pero yung resistor, pwedeng ganito ang connection. You have 3 ohms. Tapos ganito yung itsura. Yan. Nakas, nakadiretso. Kumbaga, nakabundle yung mga wires natin. Parallel connection pa rin yan. Ito nga lang, medyo um, in-exaggerate lang natin ng konti. For space and for organization of the solution. Pero sa connection, pwede naman ganito na lang yan. Eh. Depende sa pangangailangan. Okay, kung malayo ba yung pagkakabitan or malapit, pwede naman diretso tap na sa one node lamang. Okay? So, ang first governing law for parallel circuit is that the total impressed voltage or applied voltage is simply equivalent to every branch connected in parallel to the impressed voltage. So, depende kung ilan ito. I have to emphasize na ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay branches at hindi lang resistor. So, kung mababalikan natin yung introduction natin ng chapter 2, based on this circuit given, you have 4 nodes, correct? This is 1, 2, 3, 4 nodes. This is 1 branch already. Isang linya, di ba? The line in between 2 nodes, that's 1 branch. So, you have 1, 2, 3. You have 4 branches here na may laman. At itong branches na to, they are the ones connected in parallel. Yung terminals nila ang magkakasama. Ngayon, ang ibig sabihin ng notation ng formula is, the voltage in the first branch, second branch, and third branch will be equivalent to the total applied voltage. Depende sa kung saan siya nakakonect in parallel. So, if this is your voltage supply, kailangan hanapin mo, aling ba yung mga branches na nakaparallel sa kanya? Then, those lines or those branches will have a voltage equivalent to the applied. Okay? Although, sabi nga natin, pwede kong i-represent si 3 ohms dito as R1, pwede kong i-represent si 5 ohms dito as R2, and I can represent 15 ohms dito as R3. Pero pa, paano kapag nagkaganto yung circuit? Alimbawa, meron ka ditong 15 volts pa din. Tapos, you have the first branch 3 ohms. Have the second branch, dalawang 3 ohms na naka-series. Di ba kung titingnan mo, indeed, this is parallel connected. Let's say this is R1, let's say this is resistor 2, and let's say this is resistor 3. Okay? This is 15 volts. And you see here, subscripts of 1, 2, and 3. Eh, baka mamaya, isipin mo, this is voltage 1. Kung baga, dito kasi, Yung voltage across 3 ohms, 15 volts yun, kasi nakaparallel siya kay 15 volts. Si 5 ohms, since nakaparallel siya kay 15 volts, 15 volts din ang voltage niya. Si 15 ohms, nakaparallel siya kay 15 volts, ibig sabihin, 15 volts din ang voltage niya. Pero pag tinignan mo to, ito lang resistor na to ang tatanggap ng 15 volts. Source. Kung resistor ang pinag-uusapan natin, ha? Kung resistor ang pinag-uusapan natin, si R1 dito, totoo yun. 
equal siya, 15 volts din. But R2 and R3 will not represent V2 and V3 in this formula. Remember, in this formula, we are representing branches in parallel. So, kung babalikan mo tong circuit na to, dalawa lang yung branch mo na nakaparallel. You have this branch, parallel to 15 volts, and then this branch, parallel to 15 volts. Therefore, ang makakatanggap ng 15 volt supply, itong buong linyang to. Hindi si R2 lang, hindi si R3 lang. Bakit? Kasi this particular connection is not simply parallel. This is already a combination. You have a branch here that has two resistances in series. And this branch is then connected in parallel. Thus, this may be considered a series parallel connection. Therefore, pag kinuha mo si V2, dun ka sa branch titingin. So, alin ba yung second branch mo dito? Ito yun, di ba? Itong buong linyang to. Nagkataon nga lang, itong buong linyang to, dalawa yung laman niya. So, ibig sabihin, totoo, itong branch na to, 15 volts buo yung matatanggap niya. Pero, yung 15 volts na yun, paghahatian pa ng dalawang to. Why? Because the principle will follow series connection. ba pag series, summation ang voltage. So, kung itong dalawang resistor na to, this is R2, this is R3. If these two resistances is parallel to a 15 volt supply, ba ganyan ang itsura niya? May resistor dito si R1. If this is in parallel to the 15 volt supply, parang ang nangyari, ang galin mo to, naging series connection yan. So, yung 15 volts mo, kakainin niya ng dalawang resistor, R2 and R3. Eh, kung series yan, summation, ba? Yung voltage dito, plus yung voltage dito, dapat 15 volts ang sum. So, hindi pwedeng 15 volts to at 15 volts din yon Kasi pag pinagsama yung 15 at 15, 30 na. Hindi na masusunod yung principle ng series connection. Kaya, kaya wag basta-basta titingin sa subscript ng resistor. Array R1, array R2, array R3. Pagbalik mo dun sa law ng parallel, uy, VT, V1, V2, V3. Baka gawin mong 15 volts to, 15 to, 15 din to. No, you have to understand how the connection works. So, kagaya ng sabi ko, yung law ng parallel circuit nakabase sa branches. Kailangan mong tingnan ano ba yung mga branch or yung mga linya na nakakabit ng parallel dun sa voltage mo. Ito, parallel dun sa voltage. Ito, parallel sa voltage. Ito, parallel sa voltage. Pero kung itong circuit na to, nagkaroon ng isa pa dito yung resistor, ito, hindi mo na pwedeng sabihin na ano, si 15 ohms na to ay 15 volts, then hindi na. Kasi may nakasiris na sa kanya. Ibig sabihin, maghahati na silang dalawa dun sa isusupply na 15 volts sa particular branch na ito. Later, gawa natin to ng discussion para mas maintindihan natin lahat. Pero, burahin muna natin yan. Thus, I will just reiterate na kapag parallel ang circuit, equal ang impressed voltage sa voltage ng bawat branch na nakaparallel din dun sa supply voltage natin. So, kanina sa series, current ang equal, pero pag parallel, voltage naman ang equal. Tapos, sa parallel, current naman ang summation. I1 plus I2 plus I3 and so on. Okay, kasi di ba sa kanina sa, sa series, current ay equal, voltage ang summation. Pero pag parallel, babalik ta rin mo lang yun. So, branches ulit ang tinutukoy. So, kung ano man yung current sa branch 1, dagdag mo lang yung current sa branch 2 at current sa branch 3, pag tinotal mo yon or pag sinam mo yon dapat equal na yun sa total voltage na isusupply ng impressed voltage natin. Okay, thus, in this representation, you have three branches na nagkataon, tigigisa lang ang resistor na laman nila. Kaya naman, pag nagrepresent ka ng current flow, so meron tayo ditong... Um, 15, 15 volt supply, magbibigay siya ng kuryente. That would be the total current supplied by your voltage. Ang kuryente, pag pumasok yan sa junction, automatic, maghihiwala yan, mahahate. Okay? Pero yung paghate ng current, 
that is not necessarily equal. Pag tinraise mo, pag may pumasok na current dito, dapat may lalabas. Law of conservation of energy. Wala dapat natatapon. Or nade-destroy. So, pag pumasok yung current dito, mahahati yan sa dalawa. Yung current na, pag nahati yan, that's not equal. It will always depend on the value of resistance. Diba sa principle natin, pag malaki ang resistance, mas maliit ang current. So, since mas maliit ang resistance nito, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung current dito. Ngayon, from IP, nahati yung current. Yung current na napunta dito, papasok siya sa junction ulit. Ano? So, pagpasok niya sa junction ulit, mahahati na naman yan. So, ang kinoconsider lang nating branches in this case, yung may mga laman lang na components. We are, we are not going to consider this short circuit branches. So, yung current na dadaan kay R1, let's say that's I1, that will also represent the current in this branch. So, that's I1. And then, this is I2 for resistor 2. And this one is I3 for resistor 3. So, pag in natin tong lahat ng to, that will give you your total current. The third law of parallel circuit is yung reciprocal daw, kapaliktaran, of the total resistance of the circuit is simply equivalent to the sum of the reciprocals of the resistances of the branches. So, kung ano man yung resistance ng branch 1, inverse lang natin yun, or reciprocal lang natin siya, i-add natin yun sa resistance ng branch 2, reciprocal na resistance ng branch 2, and branch 3, and so on. Depende sa kung ilan yung branches natin na nakaparalel. So, to get our total, i-reciprocal natin both sides. But again, kagaya na ito yung buko, pag ni-reciprocal mo yung right side, buo yun ha, pag ni-reciprocal. So, that would be 1, all over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus and so on. Kung ilan man ulit yun. Or, to put this simply, para madali siyang pindutin sa kalipyo, ano, pwede nga na lang, inverse of R1 plus inverse ng R2 plus inverse ng R3 and so on. Tapos yung buong sagot mo, i-inverse mo ulit. So, let's try this loss on this circuit. So, ang first idea that we have is that the voltages are equal. Ibig sabihin, if the impressed voltage, Vt, is 15 volts, that will also be the applied voltage or voltage drop on each branch. So, yung branch 1 mo, that's V1, branch 2, V2, branch 3, V3, that would be 15 volts. If you already have the voltage drops, which is 15 volts, and you have the ratings of the resistances, pwede mo na agad makuha yung kuryente sa bawat branch because of Ohm's law ulit. So, going back to Ohm's law, that would be V over R. Okay? If you want to solve for the current in the first branch, you need voltage of the first branch and resistance of the first branch. So, nagkataon, iisa yung resistor ng first branch natin. Ano? Kaya naman, V1, which is 15 volts, divide lang natin dun sa resistor or resistance ng first branch natin, which is simply 3 ohms. And that would give you 5 amperes. For I2, we do the same. That would be V2 over R2. V2 is again 15 volts. Divided by R2, R2 is 5 ohms. So, 15 divide 5, that will give you 3 amperes. For I3, we do the same. You get V3 naman over R3. V3 is still 15 volts divided by resistance 3 or resistor 3, that's 15 ohms. Ibig sabihin, 1 ampere current na lang yung magpa-flow dito sa branch na to. In total, if you want to solve for the total current, that would give you, ano sabi? I1 plus I2 plus I3. So, I1 plus I2 plus I3. So, you have 5 amperes plus 3 amperes plus 1 ampere. Therefore, your I total is equivalent to... 9 amperes. Okay? After that, we solve for the total resistance naman in the circuit. So, using this formula, let's erase this first.
For R total, that would be 1 all over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Therefore, you get 1 all over 1 over R1 is 3 ohms plus 1 over 5 ohms for R2 plus 1 over 15 ohms for R3. So, solving for R total, we press that in our calculator. We put in a fraction, you get 1 all over. You get another fraction, that's 1 over 3 plus fraction 1 over 5 plus fraction 1 over 15. And that would give you 5 over 3. I hope you see it. So, 5 over 3. Alternatively, what you can do to get this answer is, kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, inverse inverse. That's a shorter way to press it in the calculator. Kunin mo lang yung resistance ng, one, ng isang branch, inverse mo lang yun. Add it to the inverse of the other, resist, other branch resistance. Plus, yung resistance ng third branch natin, inverse mo lang din. After taking the sum, inverse mo lang yung sagot. So, if we press that in your calculator, that would be... How do you do that? Okay. 3 inverse plus 5 inverse plus 15 inverse equals yung sagot inverse lang natin. So, you get 5 thirds pa din. 5 thirds. Pero, better alternative to this is para makuha mo si RT or kung gusto nyo ma-justify natin yung 5 thirds na sagot natin for total resistance, since meron ka naman na ditong VT, yung VT here, and the IT, by the time bumalik ulit kay Ohm's law, how do we solve for resistance? We cross multiply this side. So, lalabas yung resistance natin that is simply equivalent to V palit over I. So, kung kailangan nyo yung total resistance, that would be equivalent to total voltage and total current. So, yung total voltage natin, that is 15 volts, divide lang natin yan by total current natin na 9 amperes. So, simplifying the fraction, that will give you 5 over 3 ohms as an answer. That's your total resistance. Okay, so this time, let's try to solve for the power in every branch. So, we'll be solving for power in branch 1, power in branch 2, power in branch 3. For power in branch 1, for power in branch 1, let's say we use the formula I squared R. And that would be I squared 1, I1 one squared R1. For power in branch 2, we use I2 squared R2. And for power in branch 3, let's say we use I3 squared R3. Substituting our values, I1 is 5 amperes, quantity squared, multiplied by resistance 1, which is 3 ohms. This gives us 75 watts of power. For I2, that's 3 amperes, quantity squared, times R2, that's 5 ohms. That gives us 45 watts. For power 3, we have I3, that's 1 ampere, quantity squared, multiplied by R3, and that is 15 ohms. So we have 15 watts. In total, power may be solved as the sum of the power absorbed by each branch, by each passive component, and that would be 75 plus 45 plus 15 all in watts P total is equal to 135 watts to check we can use PT equal to I total squared R total and that would be I total is 9 amperes squared multiplied by the total resistance we had previously is 5 over 3 ohms. So, you'll get 81 divided by 3, that's 27 times 5, that's 135 watts.